JDBC, Java Database Connect. So we're going to cover today what is JDBC, need of JDBC, data types in JDBC, JDBC architecture, JDBC environment setup, steps to connect a JDBC, and finally an example of the Java database connection. What is JDBC? JDBC is a tool or an application programming interface that establishes a connection between standard database and Java application that intends to use that database. Need for JDBC? Establishing database connectivity to execute MySQL or SQL queries and DDL DML commands. View and modify data records. And one of the most important things to look at when we're talking about a JDBC, and probably uh, the most confusing part where the devil's in the details, is data types in a JDBC. So when we start looking at the data types and you're setting up your data, you have your SQL, which is your var character, and your Java equivalent, java.language.string. And you have your bit in SQL, in Java it's Boolean. In SQL it's numeric, java.math.bigdecimal. Integer, int, real, float, float, float. <laughs> so there's no real difference in Java between a, a real number and a float number. Uh, your double is double. Your binary is a byte. Data, Java SQL date. So your date and Java.SQL date. And there's also your SQL timestamp, Java.SQL timestamp. Array, java.sql array, reference, java.sql.reference, structure, java.sql structure, character, java.language.string, big integer, long in Java, variable binary, it's a byte, a clob, uh, and that's character large object, and then the equivalent is java.sql.clob, and then you have your blob in SQL, which is a collection of binary data stored as a single entity, and the equivalent in Java is going to be your Java SQL.blob. Now, if you're doing a lot of programming, I would suggest having a cheat sheet there, and then once you're up and running, you'll start to remember most of these uh, just because out of use. With the JDBC architecture, we're looking at the application, then it goes into the JDBC API, so you have your application you're writing, your uh, Java Database Connector API, then that has a manager underneath of it, and then you have your Java Database Connection drivers, and the drivers are the ones that are transferring that, whether it's an SQL server, MySQL server, the Oracle database, um, or different sources that use a JDBC connection. JDBC Environment Setup. So when we talk about the environment setup, we have Java and your environmental setup underneath of that. Uh, and setting up a Java environment, you have to download the latest JDK, set Java to home, and set your Java path. So if you're just using Eclipse for the first time or whatever IDE you're using to program, you want to make sure you have that all set up and you have the current JDK in there, the Java development package. And then with MySQL, setting up MySQL environment, download the latest MySQL workbench, extract the file, run the setup file. And that will get you set up with your own MySQL on your computer. And MySQL registers with your operating system. So it's kind of like a global variable when you start accessing it. And it's designed that way because normally when you're using an SQL or MySQL database, it's installed on a server. Uh, so it makes sense that you want it registered with the operating system so it's accessed uh, globally. Steps to connect your JDBC. Step 1, import your packages. This procedure is followed to make sure that the relevant packages are readily available for the API. Step 2, load and register your driver. 
The imported drivers needed to be loaded and registered for establishing a connection between application and database. And if you remember, in this case, we're doing the MySQL, so we can make sure our MySQL driver is installed. And step three, connecting database. After the first two steps, the next stage is to connect the database. This can be done by a git connection. Step four, writing a query. So now we're actually starting to get into your scripting. Here we write in the SQL command or query that we need to execute. If you're not familiar with SQL, uh, it's good to have an SQL cheat sheet set up. Once you start understanding how it's put together, you'll find that it goes really quick and it's pretty fast to learn, but it is its own query language. And you do need to learn uh, a number of the main settings and poll language so you know what you're doing. Step five, executing query. Now the query from the API is executed using execute query. And we'll actually load that up just as a string variable. When we look at that, you'll see how that fits together. Step six, processing result. After step five, the system basically does two things. It processes an output and retrieves the values from your query. And then step seven, closing statement. The result set and statement needs to be closed explicitly. Uh, and you'll find there's two closing statements. There is your result set, which is still pulling from the database. Uh, and then step eight, which is we need to actually close, closing connection. So the last stage is to disconnect ourselves or the API from the database. So we no longer have that open connection using resources. So we're gonna jump into our Java database um, connection example. And we're gonna do that with what we call the university database. Let's start with a basic overview of MySQL. And you can go to dev.mysql.com and you'll see here we can look up more information. They have the download of the newest version. Uh, this is a full SQL database package. Um, and some of these you can actually go in there and if you're doing a database management, they can spread across up to, usually you don't wanna go more than five servers, but it is designed to go up to five servers kind of set up with terabytes of data in there. For a developer on the programming side, we usually want to install something like uh, MySQL locally. So on my setup, it has no network connections. It doesn't auto start on uh, uh, the boot up of the computer. And I have it locked down. That way, if I use some kind of simple password or something like that for one of my demos, it doesn't go anywhere. No one can access it. Now, another option to MySQL is also the SQLite. Uh, and you can go to the sqlite.org, read more about it and download it. Um, it has a couple limitations that you're not gonna see in your regular, your full scale MySQL or Oracle or SQL, but most of it will transfer over. And so for a small project, you can actually use it as the backend for storing your data. You can also um, integrate it or upgrade it into MySQL because most of the SQL commands are the same. And when you go into uh, the MySQL, which is a significant download versus SQLite, uh, you can certainly go down to uh, downloads. Um, and then there's also uh, the connectors. So devmysql.com slash download slash connector slash J. Uh, and I bring this up because it depends on how you've set up Eclipse. Uh, for your interface and your IDE, and it depends on what you need and how you, exactly on your setup as far as the connectors. We'll look at that a little bit more closer. In the uh, MySQL, it is an Oracle based, so you'll have to set up an account if you don't have one. You have to log in. It's all free. As long as you're not doing like the enterprise with all the support and help on it, you don't have to pay for it. It's an open source. Now, once you've installed uh, MySQL, and if you do SQL Lite, you're not going to have these interfaces. It'll all be done from Java code. Uh, but once you've installed MySQL, it's going to add in uh, a terminal window and then also the uh, workbench, which is just a nice GUI uh, interface for MySQL server. 
And uh, we're not going to do anything with the workbench. You can play with it certainly uh, because a lot of times you don't have the workbench installed on your computer, especially if the MySQL is set up on a different server and you're remote accessing it. Uh, especially if, like if you're in the classroom or something like that, they probably have sent you your login information so you can get into the shell. Quick note though is if you do your own MySQL, uh, just note that I kept this as a local host. You can actually see it down here, root local host, no outward connections. And that's just to protect my computer. Once you start opening those, you have to be aware of your passwords. And since I'm doing demos, I want to keep my passwords really simple so that's not the focus of the programming. I had to log out and re-log back in. Uh, so once you've gone in there, you should have this. A lot of times your interface might be web-based if it's a remote MySQL connection you're working with. And it'll prompt you for your username and password. In this case, mine is on my computer. It automatically has me log in as admin, so I have full admin rights. And then we always like to start by, um, at least I do, is show databases. And these are the current databases on here. Um, they have some different information on them that is part of the basic setup and some examples like Sakilla and World are both example databases that automatically load with MySQL. For this example, we're going to create a database uh, and it's going to be University. We'll do capital there, University. Don't forget our semicolon and um, time. You can see how long it took, 0.69 seconds. And of course, if we go show databases, uh, you'll see now that there is a university in there. And we want to go ahead and use university. Uh, that means that whatever we do, any commands that we have in here for tables or whatever are now going to be going into the university database. So now our database has changed. And let's go ahead and zoom in. Uh, let's see, here we go. Set. Okay. A little bit more so we get the nice big print so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. There we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and create our table. And this has all been prepared, so I don't have to go through and, and uh, redo it all the time. You'll see here we're going to do um, uh, create a table engineering student. And then we have student ID as an integer, not null. Department variable character 25 long, first name, last name pass out year, university rank, primary key. In creating this, uh, note a couple things. First, we created a table, uh, engineering students, and we've gone ahead and created the fields as part of the create setup here. And the things I want you to note is that we have our integer. So our student ID is an integer, our department is a variable character, and it's 25 long. And the reason I say that that is really important is when we flip back on over here, if you remember from our, there we go, uh, if you remember from our data types, here's our variable character. And in Java language, that's a string. A string doesn't say, hey, it's only 25 long. And so you got to be a little careful when you're pushing and pulling this data, uh, especially when you're writing the data from Java into the SQL, that you check for that length of that string. And then the integer is, of course, an integer. And, of course, the other data types, you can see how they follow suit. But with variable character, be very aware of that, that that is a uh, designated 25 characters long. And we're going to go ahead and uh, insert some data in here. Um, here we go. Uh, we'll go ahead and insert into engineering students values. And this is going to be the student ID. And the, it's also the primary key. So keep in mind that that is a... Um, uh, unique value in there. And then we have CSE, uh, Computer Science Engineering, Karan, Akaria, 2018, 1272. Uh, so there's our pass out year, 2018, and ranked, um, I guess, number 1,272. I'm not sure where the, um, oh, that's a university ranking. There we go. And then we have some prepared data, which I just went ahead and pasted in. So we have a whole bunch of individuals in our database now. And we'll, I mean, it's the same line over and over again, insert into engineering students, values, and then you have your list of values. And we can see that by doing a simple uh, select. Uh, we'll do, let's see, a star. So it's going to select everything, one of our hot characters. If you're not familiar with... Um, SQL, get a setup on there and look it over. 
And you can also um, download a cheat sheet from somewhere with all the different commands in there. Um, I myself do a lot of consulting, and so I'm always jumping around from one platform to another. If you're doing that kind of work, it's more important to understand the limitations and the advantages of different systems, and then you have your cheat sheets for putting together stuff really quickly when you need it. And you can see here the data we just put in there. There's our student IDs, department, first name, last name, uh, pass out year, and university rank. We'll go ahead and do one query in here real quick. We're gonna, we already did one query. We're gonna do two queries. Uh, we did select star from engineering and then we're gonna go ahead and select student ID, department, first name, last name. So you can actually choose what you select instead of um, doing the asterisks. Um, where student ID equals 10202. And when we go ahead and execute that in here, oops, there we go. Uh, you'll see that it returns the one individual with that student ID here. Uh, so let's take this back into our Eclipse because we're still doing the setup. So you have your uh, MySQL server setup, or you did SQL Lite with a little bit uh, different setup going on there. And let's flip on over and see what's going on with Eclipse. So in Eclipse, we're going to go in new. Uh, we'll start a new project. And we'll call this JDBC. It's our JDBC project. Whoops. <laughs> Select a wizard. I forgot where I was going on there. It's a Java wizard. We're looking for this project. Java project. There we go. And we're going to call this there. Now we're in the right spot. Uh, JDBC package. That way everything will be bundled in there in the same package and finish it. Create. All right. So you can see right here we have our new um, JDBC package we're working with. Now, at this point, there's a lot going on as far as your options. If you set this up for doing database management, which I did not, and I'm going to show you the two different ways, you can go under uh, Windows and under Preferences, and in this list you'll see uh, database management, and then you can just go in there and set it up this way and it'll pull in that information for your SQL connections. Now if you did not and you downloaded the uh, MySQL it does have an option to download the Java Connects which would put it into wherever you installed that at which is default under your uh, C drive program files. Now on mine uh, I didn't. I downloaded the connection separately and there's two different ways. We can go under project and under the build project, give that a moment to come up. Oops, I mean properties, there we go. The um, project properties and the Java build path. This same window can be accessed by right clicking on your um, package we're working on and then we can go down to properties and you'll see the same window opens up. And we're gonna go under Java build path we're going under library. So these are libraries we want to include in our setup. And then I click on our module path. And at this point, you'll see add external jars here. Now again, if you have it already pre-set up in Eclipse, you can just add jars and it will be in the jar library. So there's different possibilities there. But I did a download, so I'm going to go add external jars. And I happen to keep mine on my D volume under my SQL. And you'll see my SQL uh, connector Java, and this is uh, my SQL 8.0. And I just go in here, oops, there we go. I just go ahead and open this up, and you'll see right here it has my connector Java. Once I set that in, it's now added those packages, and there's hundreds of actual subfiles in there, and it's all set to go. And I can apply and close this window. And now I'm ready to go ahead and start writing my script and start building a program in here. And let's go ahead and um, go under source, new, and we'll go ahead and put in a new class in here, and we'll just go call it JDBC. Uh, same as the package. We'll go ahead and finish that. And we're set up with a new class in here. And once we've got this set, the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and import all of our Java setup in here. So we have the Java connection, and now we want to go ahead and import it. And when we look at this, uh, we can see we have our connection. And remember, two of these have to be closed explicitly. And that's your connection uh, and when you create the statement. 
you have your driver manager. Uh, so when it goes in there, that's the piece that connects to actually does a connection to the um, database, the drivers that, that convert everything and the code in there. So you have your connection to the database, you have the code that converts it, uh, you have your result. So you're going to get a result off of your query. Um, then you have your exception. So if you have an error throws or something like that, that's where that's going. And of course, the actual statement that you're going to send to the SQL server. And of course, we want our Java to be able to actually run. So we'll put our main in there, public static void main. And it's going to throw the SQL exception. Uh, so you'll see right here, that's what we're working with. And there's our uh, Java SQL SQL exception on there. So the first thing we're going to need on our setup, let's put that in here, is going to be our connection information. Uh, we need to know the username, and we're just going to call it string uname equals, uh, in this case, I created a user, Richard underscore simply learn. And then I created a password, my password. Remember, this is a local host. So you probably don't want to have a simple password like that, but my, this whole database is locked down on just this computer. There's no outside network access or anything like that to get in here. Um, and then, of course, this is a separate user, so it's not even my admin or root user. And then we go ahead and put a query right here. Uh, in this case, we'll start with our most basic query. If you remember, we already did that on our uh, at the very beginning, select star from engineering students. And we're going to use that query in our code to start off with. And then another really common thing when you're setting this up is that we also want to test it and see, hey, did we import our package correctly? Is it set up correctly? Uh, so you remember we came in and we um, imported our MySQL connector jar file. In the code, we would just want to make sure it's, it's working correctly. And that's what this is. It says try class for name, and then it has our com.mysql.cj.jdbc driver it's saying, hey, do we have the driver for this? That's all that's doing. And if not, then it's going to print an error so we can find out why it doesn't have that driver. Uh, and then next, we want to actually start getting into our actual code. And uh, in here, uh, we're going to do a try, because whenever you do any kind of major connection, you want to make sure that uh, you're looking for your errors. You're not going to mess on anything. And we're going to do a catch. And so we're looking for any kind of SQL exception error. And for this demo, we'll just do, um, you know, print it out. So, um, oops, wrong spot. <laughs> uh, it goes into the catch section. There we go. Uh, so we'll print it out over down here as far as the error on there. And it's an SQL exception, so it's still looking for the code, which we haven't put in here yet. And this is really where the, the magic really starts to happen, because we have our um, connection. And there we go. And you'll see that the connection is, that's all this is right here. Here's our connection up here. And we pop it down here. We have a connection. We'll just call it con. Do one end so keep it uniform. There we go. And this is going to go to the driver. Uh, so in other words, right here, we're going to need a the driver manager. And that's where we imported here. And it says get connection because that's part of the driver manager. And we have um, our URL. Let's see. And we, of course, forgot to uh, put the URL in up above. So let's go ahead and go back there and put that in. And the URL comes out as a JDBC MySQL. That is registered with my computer. So my computer has, when it's running the MySQL, this is the local host. Um, in this case, we call it university. That's where this comes from. And that's all part of your MySQL setup. If you're working with a remote database, you'd want to get this information from the remote, uh, whoever set the database up. Uh, so that you have this particular line of where to call. And so when we go back down here, we have our connection. It's all set up on here. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, create our statement. And this initializes it. So we have a statement called statement. But this statement is going to be based on our um, driver manager, which is then connected to the connection. So these are all connected to each other. And this generates the format it needs 
uh, for when we actually send our inquiry. Remember, here's our query right here. So we're going to send select star from engineering students for right now. Um, we haven't put that part in. We're just creating the class or initiating the instance so that we can do that. Uh, and then once we've initiated the instance here, oops, go down here. We need to go ahead and generate a result. And so we have our result set. Again, that comes up here from what we brought in. We're storing the data coming in or st storing the um, pipeline to bring it in. We're just going to call that result. And then we have, uh, this is generated from our statement. Here's our statement. So this is all like linked together. Here's our execute query, which is part of the statement. And here's the actual query, which is coming that we put together, the select star from engineering students. And then finally, we want to actually do something with our information. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll just loop through it while. And here's our result uh, set that we just generated. So while result dot next and this just generates a boolean so it says hey there's still another result coming in so we need to go ahead and get that next result and we'll go ahead and create a um, and we'll take that string university data and then uh, we're going to loop through the different results there we go integer and then here we go university data then we want to tag on the end of it result.getstring i so what's going on here there, we just did a bunch of things uh, we are going through each row result.next each row of data that comes off of the database until this returns null there's no next uh, result coming in there and then we come in there we look at the result the one we're looking at is the current one so it goes through uh, i forget how many we put in there about 20 it was you know row 20 was zero row one row two row three row four and then on each of these rows we have a string it's an array of strings and we're going to get that string and it returns i so this is get string of column i uh, so we have row and column and really important in today's programming to really understand rows and columns because that's so central to most of the data processing going on. And then finally, we want to go ahead and see our results. So let's print them out. We'll put in our nice uh, print statement, uh, system out print line university data. So this is going to print each row as it goes through it. And then I'll reset the row again to, to an empty string. And then I'll add each of the columns to that row from our result. And then we'll print the next row out. And now that we have a complete code, let's go ahead and go up here, hit the run button. It's going to compile it, runs it out. And we can see down here, uh, let me just get my double mouse so we can get a better view. Uh, here's our different, uh, um, your ID comes up. What their, I forget what the actual setup was, but the CSE, the name, the date, the ranking, all that prints out one row at a time. And that's what we're doing here. Of course, if you're processing the data differently, you might be loading this into a um, user interface. This might be generating other information. You may be doing statistics with it. Uh, but you can see how it's set up in here uh, as far as pulling the data into the Java format and then running it from there. Just so we can get a, a quick glimpse of where this goes, let's go back up here. And we're going to flip back and forth between a couple different screens. So let me do that. Uh, and here, if you remember, we did select star from engineering students. And there's the same thing up here that we got down here. This is our MySQL server interface. And this is the interface we built in Java. And if you remember, we also did this uh, particular selection, select student ID, department, first name, last name, pass out year, university rank from engineering students where student ID is. And we got the single row on here. And uh, this is kind of interesting because I switched something in the code here where this could cause a problem. It won't on this one. Uh, let me go ahead and paste this in here. And then we'll run and compile this one. And you see it comes out with the single user. So the danger of this particular code is that I went ahead and hard-coded in a loop for i equals 1 to 6. And so this one we pulled, it just happened to be that we did selected six different columns in here. So you got to be a little careful when you're coding in here. What are you pulling and where is it going? 
uh, you can see if I take out, oh, let's do, um, we'll just remove the student ID. And we're going to run that without the student ID. Uh, we compile it. There we go. And it gives us a bunch of errors because it doesn't see the, we're short a column down here. So when it gets down to this code down here, uh, under the while statement, and it goes, hey, where's number six? Well, there's no number six, and so we get a lot of errors on that. And you can see where our queries, um, let me just go back up here and paste another query in. There we go. And we'll run this one. And what we're looking at is uh, we're going to go ahead and do the same columns. And we'll just leave this as a star to make it easy. So we're going to select all columns from engineering students where the pass out year is 2018. Let me just do a copy of that one. And we'll run that. It recompiles. And you can see here's all the 2018 um, on here if you look at the dates. So they're all 2018. And that's the same as our um, query directly into the SQL Server. If I do the same thing on here, uh, you'll see they're exactly the same. And just because we're having fun, let's flip this back over here and we'll do one more um, SQL Server. And let's do in this one. Let's see, let's just take this whole thing out here. And in this one, we're going to pull in all the departments, but I want the minimal university ranking as the highest from engineering students. That way we can get an order of the rankings on here. And we'll go ahead and run this. And there we go. There's our minimal one. Uh, so this one hit the lowest ranking on there, or closest to number one. And we can do that in here and get the same result. Uh, there's Karen. Karen is awesome. Uh, ranking number 96. And you see all these other people that are ranked way below Karen. So that's, this guy must be super smart. So that concludes our uh, JDBC example, University Database, where we took a quick look at uh, MySQL Server, or you can do SQLite, and some basic queries you can put in there and how that works. Thank you for joining us today at Simply Learn. For more information, please visit www.simplylearn.com. Get certified, get ahead. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.